What changed for you guys in that first half when you were down 20 and were able to go on that amazing run in the second quarter? Uh, the physicality of the, of, of, of um, our team in the second quarter. We were getting into them. We were getting stops and getting out and running. We were making shots. DB was back to being DB, uh, which is nice. Uh, I thought I thought Russell willed us into that second quarter. I mean, he was um, saying a few things that were probably uh, well deserved um, to some guys that needed to hear it. And I, but I thought I thought Alex came in. He struggled, and then we went to the uh, the, the the next next big and, and Rolo. And I thought he changed the game. And then. Alex came back in, and then I thought he played uh, like he needs to play with the physicality, with the rolling and finishing at the rim. I thought in the second, in that second half, he that third quarter, he put his body on their big fellow. They got two all stars on that team that are that are dynamite players that are hard to stop. They're tricky. They're crafty. They're playoff t uh, tested, and this team is good. And then now they're you know tonight they they got some of their injured players back. Um, but I thought we battled and we gave ourselves a chance to win. I mean, we probably made it too close down the stretch with uh, some mistakes and some calls that didn't go our way. But, you know, we, we made a couple of plays down the end, which won the game for us. And Davis, for him to go off like that, um, how much did he change this game by just getting hot from three? Well, it, it was coming. It was coming. It was, it was, he was warming up it was either a quarter then it went to a half and it went to maybe a little bit in the second half and now the last couple of games uh he's back he's not going to go nine nine four eleven uh all the time but you're going to have those games now then he's going to have you know the bad games are probably going to be four four eleven four for ten uh, but i thought his his shot making was elite like it like it has been but uh, tonight he was good. Uh, I thought uh, Howu came in in that that second quarter. Also, that was a huge spark plug. I thought those those minutes were huge. And I keep telling guys, your minutes are are important no matter what time of the game it is, and you can impact the game and change the game. I thought I thought Rolo and Howu and DB those minutes in that second quarter gave us a chance to win tonight. Fred. Scott, um, what what did you what do you, what is the takeaway from a game like this where it almost felt like you guys played three different games? You you fall down, <laughs> you make the run, you get up, and then you kind of let go of it during those final four minutes. Yeah, I, I would even say I would even say maybe four games. Uh, because the game that I thought we were gonna have before the game started. Um I thought, you know, it's that's what's NBA. That's why I love about it. It's such a it's such an emotional game and it's a passionate game. It's the team who plays with the most passionate a lot of times wins. And I thought they came out with they came out ready to run run and, and they were running. It's amazing. Jokic was out running Mo early in the game, like three or four possessions. Uh, and they gave them a gave them a chance to just jump out us. And we were chasing that basketball all all the way all the way around. And, you can't do that with one of the best passing shot making teams. And if you do that, you're going to be in for a long night. And we were about to get into a long night until those guys came in the second quarter and changed the game around. And, and we're uh, the final defensive play of the game where Murray hits the three and you guys are up three. Were, were you supposed to foul there? What was the, difference? no, well, you know, we had a foul to give the play before. And then I think it took the clock down to under, under six, five, five, nine. We've had some, a uh, couple of mess ups in that situation throughout this year. And then we had a few of them in practice. Uh, so we weren't, I wasn't confident enough to do it again. Um, I know we haven't practiced a lot. We got a lot of young inexperienced players uh, on the floor, but I, I would like to do that, especially, you know, over five seconds. Uh, but we didn't. Uh, so our, our next alternative was to make sure they catch it out, which we did. We were a little late on that on that last screen. We got lucky that he didn't, you know, catch and shoot right away. But Rui knows 
he said that it was he was too far out. I said, no, it's not not anymore. Not anymore. We got there's a there's a dozen players that there's no jump ball circles. That's their range. They practice it. They make it. And he know he knows that we needed to put that ball on the floor and and give a better contest. But we we got away with these are all learning experience on for some of our guys that that are playing. And I'm I'm glad that we're in these uh, moments. And you know I know we I knew we had a you know a timeout. You know this like I said if we we messed up a few of those already this year and then practice when we did have a practice about a I don't know a week and week or and a half ago. We messed up a couple of trying to foul, and we're just not—we're not quite ready for that. But normally, I, I would like to do that. Eva, hey Scott, um, could you just elaborate a little bit, maybe, on what exactly Robin was able to do to kind of help wrap up um, Jokic in the in the second quarter there that he did so well? Well, he's he's a he's a he's a big he's a big, he's a big man. He's 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 wide. He's strong. He's tough. He uses his body verticality. That's why we have him. And he's he's awkward. He's awkward enough that I mean he's he's he I just love the way he plays. He's and he's just a great personality. Uh he's you know, he's turning into like, you know, the favorite. All the guys love him. Coach and staff loves him. We have a good relationship. I just I, I like messing with him, and he he throws some stuff at me. Uh, but I, I I think his toughness and his he just gives his body up, and he sets great screens, and he rolls, and he finishes. I mean he he jumps about as high as a South Dakota uh, phone book, but it still gets it. He still gets it enough, and but he he knows how to play, man. That's why that's why he's out there. You know, crunch minutes. He knows how to play and. And Brad and Russell love love playing with him because he knows when to set screens. He knows when to hold them. He knows when to roll. He knows when to short pop. He knows when to do a DHO. He knows when to do a weak side action. And we don't have to teach him those things because it's just instinctually. But trust me, when he was three or four years in, he didn't know all those things either. He's 13, 13 years in. It kind of helps. I'd never heard the South Dakota phone book one. Um, could you just speak on maybe the significance of this little streak that you guys have here with three games going in into this really tough West coast trip you have coming up. No, it's always, it's always, you know, when we want to, we want to we we always want to win home games. Uh, we, we gave up a couple early in, in this stand, not gave up. We just didn't have it. You know, we were, we were still, I thought the first one was at Toronto and they just came in, they made a bunch of shots and, New York just they just they just attacked us and we we messed up on a lot of our coverages that we were going over before the game but it's always important to get that last last game going on the road because now we're on let's face it we're playing for the you know the toughest teams we're playing this team again we're playing Portland on you know Saturday night and then we got Monday and Tuesday Lakers Clippers day off and we got tough game in in, in Denver and then a road trip and then we got uh, a tough game coming home against Minnesota and then a back-to-back -back at, at Boston. So that's not going to be easy. And then we got, it's just going to be tough. It's going to be tough, but we know, we know what we have to do. And we got, you know, Memphis and LA Clippers before we go off in our break, but we know we have to get this first home game, which was our last home game was, was important. Uh, we'll take a few more here, but if anybody wants Davis Bertans, he's going to go ahead and start over in the secondary room in a minute. Uh, well, that means that this is probably the last question. <laughs> they don't want to talk to me. They'd rather talk to him. Ask him where he, ask him where he was at, um, late December. We needed a couple of those shots to bit then. Now, he's he's back. He's He's confident, you know. Give him credit. The guy has fought through. No, no training camp coming late, and then this protocol missed three weeks. It's conditioning. When you have, when you're a shooter and a high level shooter, you need those legs. And he's coming back, and he's fought through it. And he's a mental tough kid. And that was easy for him to just because he was he was missing shots that he normally makes in his sleep, and he's back to making them. And we're all excited for him. Scott, what makes him so effective at um, drawing fouls on the three as well? Because he has a uh, he has good footwork that he doesn't probably get enough credit for that. You have to have good footwork to get your balance, to get your spacing, 
and to get your shot and your hips and everything going in the right direction. And he has great footwork and he has a quick, re- has a quick, quick and a high release. And he, and he does it all basically in one motion with his body turning and, and getting his feet squared up and everything's going towards the basket and, and defenders, they know if they don't chase them hard, they're not going to be able to contest them because he's almost seven feet tall and he shoots high and shoots quick. So a lot of guys, they, they run into him. I mean, he, you have to give him landing. You have to give him a landing uh, pad. And, and a, lot of t- a lot of guys, you know, it, it's hard. I mean, we foul big time shears like that as well because you want to contest. If you don't contest these guys, man, they make them at a high clip. And that's how he gets them. The same thing with, with Garrison. He does the same thing. These guys are great footwork and they make shots and they, you have to chase them. And that's how, that's how they get three free throws per shot. Davis, you said you had a, a good feeling before last game. Did you have the same feeling tonight? Well, <laughs> I didn't lose it in the last game, so yeah. What was the key for you tonight? Just take us through. You got a, a new career high in threes made and in um, in points, and coming out of kind of a, a dry spell for you. What was it? Uh, what was it like? Uh, well, the, we had a great ball moment. Guys gave me a couple of good looks in the beginning when those shots went down. And then, you know, from there, it's just, it just keeps going. You know, they, they start looking for me even more, running more plays for me. And uh, now I'm just taking advantage of that. And, you know, when the shot is falling, there's, you know, sometimes there's not much the defense can do. Fred? Hey, Davis. Um, what, what makes you particularly effective at getting fouled on jump shots? Well, I think it's the biggest reason is they're not close enough. It's going to be basically a wide open shot for me. If they really want to bother my shot, they got to be closer. So it's it's really hard sometimes for the defense to, like I know it for a fact that it's like if I'm guarding a really great shooter, it's tough to contest a shot and uh, also avoid the, uh, avoid the contact completely. So so very often if you see somebody open and you're running out, it's, it's really hard to stop and uh, you just foul them. Do you, do you practice shots that you get fouled on like is that a specific thing you practice uh no not at all it's just uh you know when, you, when i'm shooting i'm just trying to think about making a shot even though if my legs get knocked out of me on, on, knocked out of under me and uh if i feel like the balance is not there anymore i still try to keep my upper body straight line and, and try to finish the shot Case. Hey, hey Davis, I'm, I'm sure what you did tonight was was more how you pictured this season would go. But you know, as you're going through shooting struggles and you know you can help your team, what's it like uh, knowing you can do it, but you know those the shots aren't falling? Man, it's those couple months been uh, frustrating as hell. You know, can't can't sleep at night after the game thinking about it because we had a lot of games that uh, we were close. You know, I've taken nine, 10 shots that I would usually make at least five, six of them and, and going like one for 10, two for 10. You know, of course, as, as everybody, as a competitor in my position, it's like you, you kind of blame yourself a little bit. Uh, you think about after the game, what, what, what I could have done better, what, how I could have helped the team, you know, for me, it was simple, just make the shots. And as you look at this stretch for you guys, where you're, you're six and five in your last 11, um, things are starting to stable uh, be be more stable what do you think has been the biggest key to that that you guys need to like keep going moving forward well the biggest key is you know we're gonna tonight was a great great night offensively but we're gonna have some off nights offensively you know we can't we can't let that affect our defense uh we started off in the first quarter really bad on defensive end they scored 41 points and then second quarter we pulled ourselves together we kept them under 25 and I think that's the key going forward. You know, the more the more quarters we can keep other teams under 25, the, the bigger the chance for us is going to be to win the games because, you know, offense usually is not a problem for us. Alan? Hey, that was, uh, sorry this has been asked already, but I guess for, for tonight specifically, what was what did you feel was going so well for you? Were, were you just kind of locked in? Were just shots just dropping? Or what, did, what worked so well for you today? You know, I think it's just uh, last game was like uh, – Flipping a switch, and uh, you know ev- everything started working uh, better for me. And uh, you know, getting getting good looks early, just uh, you know the hoop get, getting bigger and bigger. You know, I think the couple threes that I missed, I felt like those should have gone in too. 
And coach mentioned, he said, you know, you're back, you're confident. Where's your confidence in your game and where you are right now? Well, I think, uh, I think the game spoke for itself. You know, the couple, the, 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 some of the shots that I took, uh, those I take only if I'm 100% sure that the ball is going in. And, uh, and that, that's where it is right now. Thank you. Last question to Neil. Hey, Davis, uh, you were talking about early in the first quarter, you guys had those timeouts. Scott said Russell, you know, really kind of lit into you guys a little bit. Can you just kind of take us through what the reactionary was and how you guys fought back from there? Uh, I think it's, it's great to have a guy like Russ on the team, you know, uh, that, that keeps the the part of coaching to coaches, you know, and uh, a part of just getting on somebody, keeping everybody accountable, you know. Uh, that's like he's that guy and uh, he helps us and I know that you know even if he says something to somebody we don't take it personal we know that everybody wants to win he wants to win and, and everything he says is, is is for the better of the team so Jokic gets off to that really hot start while you're on the bench what what are you trying to do when you come in that game and and you know that a guy who's that kind of player is already in that kind of group yeah um you know he's obviously he's a fantastic player um I, I, my, my goal is just to uh, try to make him not quite as comfortable. And I'm, he's somebody that um, he likes to be, be really sneaky, really clever out there, try to get to the line, get some and ones. Uh, so you, you, you want to not, not put him in that position. And, and I just, I, I got to ask you, Scott, Scott Brooks said that uh, he gave, said some very nice things about you, but then also added that he doesn't know if you can jump over a South Dakota phone book. <laughs> and uh, I was just wondering if there are any state's phone books that you can jump over. Um, possibly Wyoming. I think that's the least popular state, right? I think that's right. I'll check for you. <laughs> Please do. Chase. Yeah, Robin, what do you think has been the uh, key to these victories recently, you know, going six and five in the last 11, and then obviously these three straight? Um, we've been really locked in. I think uh, Mo's been great for us. Mo is talking out there. He's really active. I think uh, everybody's feeding off that. I know I've, I've been feeding off of that. And um, sorry if you've already been asked, but Davis Bertans, uh, what, what can his three-point shooting do to change a game as it did tonight? Um, you know, just the, the threat he carries, even uh, when, when he's not shooting the ball, you, you have to respect that. So that uh, it really opens things up for Brad. It opens things up for us. Uh, that's, that's big time for us. Neil? Robin, you are correct. Wyoming is the uh, least populous state. In the first quarter, uh, second time out, Russ was talking to you guys before the coaches even came back into the huddle. Can you kind of take us through you know, what he was emphasizing there? He was just uh, letting us know that it was too easy for them out there. Everything was, uh, there wasn't enough physicality. They're getting too many second chance points. Everything was coming uh, too simply for them. Ava. Hey Robin, um, does it help when you're able to kind of take a couple minutes when you start out on the bench to really see what a big like Jokic is doing and kind of what he's getting going in a game or have you just played against him for so long that that doesn't really matter? You kind of know his tendencies anyways. Um, a little bit, yeah, a little bit. Um, it, certainly, it certainly helps, like you said, to have prior knowledge of what he, what he enjoys doing, what he prefers doing. But uh, it, that, that can sometimes change from night to night. You see, um, where he's hot from three point line in the post. Uh, yeah, it, it can change. And what jersey are you wearing? Oh, uh, J J Japan national team, Blue Samurai. It's uh, Honda, Honda song. Zaki Kuma. Yeah, actually, uh, Robin, I do want to ask about that. Um, what made you decide to wear the Blue Samurai jersey today? I know it was in my closet, and it's always a. Uh, it's always as if it's kind of stand, sitting upon a throne whenever it's in there. But today it particularly spoke to me. So I thought I'd pull it out and I'd don it for a little bit. And Keisuke Honda is your good luck charm, I guess. Uh, perhaps, perhaps. I think uh, 
he's a good omen anywhere he is. On the back of my jersey, wherever he is in the world, he's always a good omen for everybody, I think. Thank you. Callan. Hey, Robin, what have you seen from Davis like this past week, like even during like practice and shoot arounds and like warm up? Has he just been like, does, it, does he just look more confident or he has his legs under, under him? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, when, when you see the ball go in, that, that changes a lot for, for anybody in the league. And obviously he's one of the elite shooters in the league. Um, that's I, 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 you know, that's that's what he does. It's what he does. Last question to Chase. Yeah, Robin, uh, Russ and Brad tonight assisted each other. It seemed like on some shots that were in rhythm. Are, are you starting to see the chemistry between them get better the more they play with each other? Um, yeah, definitely. I think uh, everybody's getting more familiar with each other on offense. And I think especially on defense, we, we really, we've had each other's back and it's, it's, been, it's been great. What do you take away from a game that had that many different ups and downs? Uh, first, praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I think the ultimate thing is that, you know, we, we stuck with it. You know, it was a lot of, like you said, it was like five different games in one tonight. You know, we, we got off to a shaky start, and then, you know, our bench comes in and makes a lot of noise and brings us back. And then before you know it, we're up at half. You know, we're going into the second half. You know, we're winning. All of a sudden, they make their run. You know, it gets a little crazy and nerve nerve wrecking at the end. But I think it just shows our our kind of poise and our growth. You know, I think in I think earlier in the year we would have we definitely would have folded in those situations. But we did a good job of defending uh, and and you know executing when we needed to down the stretch. And and tomorrow they're announcing all star starters as of. As of the last returns, you you were still in the lead in the East. What's just what's your mentality going into that whole thing? Uh, um, I ain't gonna say I don't care, but you know I, you know what I mean. Like I don't I don't put really too much focus on it. Like my ultimate thing is just trying to help my team win. You know, uh, it's definitely a blessing and an honor to be in that position because you know there's so many guys who are deserving to one be in the game, and then two is definitely enough guys who, who deserve to start. So, uh, you know, to be able to have that recognition is is an honor. You know, I don't take it for granted. It just motivates me to continue to work on my craft for sure. Ava. Brad, what did you feel like was the um, turning point ahead of that second quarter there? You mentioned the bench. Um, Scott also said that Russ spoke to you guys and got into you guys a little bit. Yeah, it was just, you know, we, we had to pick up our intensity. They weren't doing anything, you know, special. Uh, they were just playing harder than we were. They're getting a lot of offensive rebounds. And, you know, that's some that's stuff we can control, myself included. So uh, it was just a matter of just getting box, getting stops one, uh, then boxing our guy out and, you know, securing the ball. Uh, you know, I think we did a really good job of that in the second quarter on through the rest of the game. You know, I think the first quarter was absolutely terrible for us, but, uh, you know, we definitely credit our bench and guys for being ready and helping us give us give us a fuse that we need. And what's the emotion that you have when you see Davis have a night like he has tonight? Does it feel like relief? Are you excited for him? Is it just nice to see him kind of back? All of the above, all of the above, you know, because we know how he puts a lot of pressure on himself to, to be perfect every game and to make every shot. And, you know, he's human just like me and everybody else. So, you know, when he does have games like this, you just keep feeding. You keep giving him the ball. You keep giving him the ball as much as we possibly can. And uh, he's always going to shoot it. He's going to shoot it. Hell, if he's if he's if he's over fifty and if he's fifty for fifty, he's going to shoot. And that's what we want him to do. So uh, he knows that it was a great game for him tonight. But even then, I think it was just other stuff in the game that he was doing that, that got him going. You know, he was he was locked in defensively. He's getting rebounds. Uh, he's putting his body in plays, and you know, I think that definitely just carried over to the offense. Chase. Hey, Brad, when when Davis is shooting as well as he has these last two games, what's it like having that come off the bench? Uh, it's a spark, you know, it's, it's one like you like we've seen tonight. We needed it, you know, uh, I think it's, it's definitely it creates a lot of opportunities uh, for guys to drive, especially in the second group. I would rest out there, you know, it gives them open lanes to be able to create because you can't help off Davis where it's you might as well sprint back on, on the other end and count it. Uh, so, you know, we 
we trust in them. You know, it's, it's, you know, coach mixes up the lineups here and there. Uh, you know, we've been, you know, three and all the last three with the lineups that we have. So, you know, he's comfortable with it. Uh, like I said, whenever he's, he's ready to go and giving us a lift, it's, it's even better. And it seemed like you and Russ each found each other in rhythm for some, you know, especially around the baskets and easy buckets. Um, how's your chemistry with him in particular developing as you learn how to play with each other? It's grown. It's grown. You know, it's, it's, it's easier for me because, you know, I don't always need the ball in my hand. You know, I'm, I'm able to read, read my guys and, you know, play off of them. And, uh, and I feel like that's all I do with Russ. I, I let him have his opportunities of creating, uh, you know, when he wants to go into a back down, when he wants to go into his one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you know, we, we grant him, you know, those opportunities, you know, and, and uh, he's successful with them. He creates plays for us. Uh, so we love it. All I have to do is just continue to move without the ball, trust my teammates, um, you know, come off screens hard, screen other guys, just just keep defenses off, off, off balance uh, with, with how they can guard us. Neil? Brad, I've noticed this season, you guys do a lot of clapping on the bench. Why do you think that is, and what's the benefit from it? That's a wild-ass question, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess guys are happy, you know? I think if, if I'm over there pissed off, you know, it's, you know, Brad's upset, you know? Uh, but now everybody's clapping. So I guess it's maybe it's the wins, I guess. I don't know. I mean, winning, winning brings on great attitudes. Uh, but I mean, we just nobody. Like I always said at the beginning of the year, nobody hates the next man. Nobody doesn't, you know, wish any ill on the next man. We're all great character guys, and uh, we know that you know nobody's going to feel sorry for us, and nobody's going to dig us dig us out of this hole. But ourselves, you know, we we can only do that collectively and together, you know, and, and just encouraging each other, uh, cheering each other on throughout the throughout the the whole game is you know something that we've been developing and. Uh, embracing as a team. Do you feel like that's not necessarily Keith? I, I was meaning it in the sense of when you guys are down early, you know, guys are trying to say, okay, it's still a lot of time left, things like that. Yeah, I mean, because we've, we, we, we know we have to build off of our last two games. You know, we can't fall back into those bad habits. You know, at times we do, uh, but there's gonna be times in which, you know, tonight we don't get off to good starts. Our energy isn't there and, you know, you're gonna need you know, that energy that sparked from someone because we damn sure don't have fans. So, you know, we have to create that energy, you know, within ourselves from the get go. Uh, you know, and so when we come out a little flat, you know, the only thing we can do is rely on, you know, the man next to you to, you know, kind of give you some encouragement, you know, to keep going. You know, guys tell me all the time I miss two shots, turn the ball over, whatever. Keep going, keep attacking. So, you know, that's, that's always good and positive to hear. Uh, we spread that message, you know, throughout to everybody. Um, and so it's, it's definitely promising and, and great signs to see. Matt, Paris. Yeah. Hey, Brad. Um, just curious, with the fan vote, do you think last year's snub kind of contributed to a reason why you're, you're leading it at all? Like, do you think it raised your profile or fans were kind of encouraged to vote for you after what happened last year? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of everything. Uh, I definitely think the snub has a little bit to do with it. Uh, I wouldn't say all the way to the point to where they made it point to where I had to start. But uh, I think it was just gaining the recognition uh, last year and then it just carried over to this year. And, um, you know, me just constantly working on my game and, you know, playing the way I've been playing. But, you know, I'll, I, I never take all the credit. I always credit God, credit my teammates and, uh, and just continue to do what I do and continue to control what I can. And what is it kind of like to be known as that guy, the guy who's not the guy who doesn't get that recognition? Oh, uh, it's tough at times, but, you know, ultimately it brings you back to why do you play the game? You know, um, the, when I first picked up a basketball, it wasn't to win a trophy. It wasn't to win someone's approval. It wasn't to win someone's vote. Um, and so, you know, it always brings me back. And I think that's been my approach the last couple of years is, you guys hear me all the same time say, I don't care about the All-Star. I don't care about, you know, if I make it because at the end of the day, accolades is not what I want to be remembered by. I want to be remembered by the impact I leave on people. Um, so, you know, however that looks, however many All-Stars, All-NBAs, whatever, uh, I can care less. You know, I just want to be a dominant player and leave a lasting impact on people. Culture of sports.
Puerto Rico. Uh oh. Yeah, that would be you. No. Okay. Last question to Quentin Mayo. What's up, B? She was work. Um, you're three and zero with this new starting lineup of you, Russ, uh, Rui, Mo, and Garrison Matthews. Is that the new starting lineup you guys need to rock with for the rest of the season? I uh, mean, it's working. You know, uh, you know the old saying: if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, you know, I think that's that's been kind of our approach the last couple of games. And uh, you know, obviously, coach is going to you know he's the head honcho. He's going to make that decision. But you know, I think. To having Mo and putting Mo and Garrison into the lineup generated some energy, you know, and I think it lit a little fire up on the guys that coach, you know, decided to bench and take out a lineup too. So I think it, it plays, it played in our, it played in our favor the last couple of games. So I think, uh, I think come Portland, you probably see the same thing. And what's the feeling as you're on the verge of being an all star starter? What's that feeling like for you? It hasn't hit me yet, honestly. Um, it really has, like, I'm, I don't know. I think I'm just so mind-boggled by last year and this year is just, like, two different extremes. Yeah. So it really, I think it really hasn't hit me yet. Uh, but, you know, it, it'll definitely be, you know, a special moment, you know, for me. I think my family will probably be more excited than I will. But, uh, you know, I never take anything for granted. Like I said before, it's a motivational thing for me, uh, you know, to be recognized for that then, you know, there's so many other great guys who are in this position too. There's so many other great guys who will be next to you who deserve to be where you are. Uh, you know, so that's just motivation to just continue to work at it and continue to be better. And real quick, how important was it for you guys to get on this streak right before this road trip? Huge, 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 huge. Uh, for one, just winning at home. Uh, winning at home, getting wins, period. Uh, it's always, you know, great. Granted, there's, there is an advantage, but there isn't an advantage, uh, you know, being at home, being on the road. Uh, but... You know, it's always good to be able to, you know, have that home stand and be able to get get some wins and then one right before you leave out. You know, that's always the hardest one to get. So uh, that's definitely a, a good boost of confidence uh, before we head out west.